May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Those of you who are very, very, very old <coughs> will remember this. We used to use two terms to describe the church, and it's particularly relevant on this Sunday when we keep All Saints as our great festival. We used to say the church triumphant. Do you remember that? Who were the church triumphant? Well, the, it's the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. John the Baptist and St. Peter and Paul. That's God's sense of humor, by the way, putting St. Peter and Paul on the same feast day. They never got on. They will forever be bickering in eternity. Why are we both on the same day? The saints in heaven, the church triumphant, those who have reached completion and grace and are in the heart of God. And the other term we used to use for the church, which is all of us here in earth. Can anyone remember the church militant? The church militant here in earth. Because we're still on the journey. We're still the pilgrim people of God on planet earth, making our way toward the heart of God, and we haven't got there yet, but of course it carries with it imagery of warfare and battle and aggression. So we tend not to use those two terms quite so much anymore. I don't know whether it's because of political correctness. Could be. Uh, I'm not sure what PC is, anyway. I've, I've never sure, I'm never certain what people mean when they say that. I, I kind of recognize it from a long distance, but I'm never sure of the details. But the church triumphant, the church militant. It's very important to realize the dynamic both the individual, you, each one of you, and myself, and the dynamic of us, the church, universal. It's a very important kind of awareness to have, and as we mark the 500th anniversary of the Reformation and Martin Luther, may I offer you just the tiniest insight that has dawned on me, actually even during the last few days. Luther translated the Holy Scriptures into German, the same as John Wycliffe, William Tyndale, translated the scriptures into English. That, in and of itself, is a revolutionary act. It's a gift. It is formative, at, and we don't realize this, it's formative in the culture the language, the nation that we call Germany today. There was no such thing as Germany before. There were lots of little 
fiefdoms and um, you know duchies and princes all mixed up and jumbled together. Luther gives a cohesion to the German language, the German culture, and we would say identity. It's another word I'm a bit unsure about, identity. And makes the scripture available to everyone. That is a gift. It is also a failing. There's a big mistake there. And, and we don't realize it most of the time. Because it's to do with the we and the I. The same as the scriptures being available in English. A gift, a blessing, a grace, an opportunity. Also a mistake. Now, I don't think many of us have ever thought that it was a mistake. But here's the mistake. And it's not huge, but it's massive. We went from being a community, a people, who heard the Holy Scriptures, which is what we're meant to do, to try and hear God speaking. We went from a community who heard to individuals who read Nothing in and of itself wrong with that. I mean, that's a gift. That one can sit at home and read the Bible in English. But it loses a dynamic that is very, very important. I, I'm guessing this applies in music as well. That music up until a certain era was written for a the participation of a number of people. After a certain era, it becomes more individualistic, and perhaps it loses a certain dynamic. I know that with scripture, because this is what happens, rather than listening, hearing the scriptures, you and I on a Sunday morning do this. We, we read it. We've got our noses in the order of service. When what we should be doing is putting those down and hearing God speak. So I've kind of polarized it a bit. Uh, so forgive me for polarizing it. But that's just to point out a certain dynamic, something gained, but something lost. And simply to be aware of that is perhaps what we can do 500 years after Martin Luther's tremendous work of forming the German culture the German mind, the German language, the nation of Germany. There is an appropriate balance in the corporate and the individual. And we can see that as a congregation, as a parish sometimes, in in the confession, in the mass, we confess the times we've failed God. We also confess the times when we failed the community. Occasionally, we'll be aware enough to say, oh, I've failed myself. A good insight. But then, on the other hand, 
It can be a failure when we become too individualistic and the entire community can sort of start to judder, can start to stumble, can kind of be paralyzed by one individual's issues. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm trying to be uh, generous and kind and gracious about our sins, which is not easy. There is such a malaise in our world today. It doesn't matter which um, political party, it doesn't matter what one's convictions are about any kind of issue, really. Um, but there is a malaise. And I think it's got something to do with this balance between realizing our corporate responsibility as a culture, as a people, as a society, and our rather rampant individualism in the commercial nature. Everything is packaged and bought and sold and branded. Even religion is branded. I mean, why, why, why am I saying even religion? I mean, switch on the television and, well, you won't see high mass at St. Thomas the Apostle. Uh, you will see people who will tell you, touch your television set now, I will send you healing. Oh, and send me a couple of thousand dollars as well. Mm. That's, that's not what Christ came and proclaimed. Neither did Christ come and proclaim your personal therapy session or my personal therapy session. Christ is not a social worker. He is the divine physician. He brings healing. But when we become obsessed with our simple, little, limited perspective, and we kind of paralyze people around us with our issues, then that's an inappropriate way of dealing with the gifts that God has given to us, such as the scriptures in German or in English. I'm, I'm not sure if I think I may be confusing us more and more as I'm saying that, so maybe I should shut up. bad ways of taking responsibility, where every issue I have is your problem. Appropriate ways of taking responsibility. When the stranger comes through the door, when the marginalized are treated so badly, when the homeless have scorn poured upon them, we need to reassess because Christ calls us to remember that blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. And blessed are you. As I heard that, I was watching you. You are such a body of grace and love and welcome and warmth. Let's not give in 
to being mean-spirited or critical or negative or saying horrid things, not about other people, but about ourselves. We're, we're so negative about the church. The church doesn't need an opposition because so many people in the church are so critical of the church and fail to see the blessings that you are. That's worth pondering on All Saints Day. I've lost my order of service. <laughs> so this is from even before the Incarnation. And those of you who know the Vaughan Williams will get it. Excuse me a sec. The Psalm, verses 8, following. O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye that are his saints. For they that fear him lack nothing. The lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they who seek the Lord shall want no manner of thing that is good. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.